In this video, we're going to look at some sample condensed electron configurations. So let's take a look at a few. I'm going to put them all up here, but we'll just do them one at a time. So let's start with the antimony. Go ahead and pause your video, look it up on your reference table, make sure you can find it. You should see that antimony has an atomic number of 51. That means that it has 51 protons and 51 electrons. The next thing you want to do for the condensed electron configuration is find the previous noble gas. So go back to the row before it to the end where the noble gases are and look to see which one it is. You should have decided it is krypton. And we write that in our square brackets. Those, those take the place of that krypton electron configuration. So all the 1s2, 2s2, all the parts that are krypton's electron configuration are covered by putting that there. All right, the next thing you want to do is drop down to the row that antimony is in, and then you want to start there. You're in row five, so your first block is 5s, and it has two electrons in it. Next, you have uh, the d block. Remember that the d block, we have to subtract one for that coefficient, so it's in row five, but then it's 4d. And since it's after the d block, we need to fill the d block with 10 and then back up to 5, because only the Ds are one row behind, and then that next section is P3. The next example is mercury. Again, pause and look for it. Number 80, so 80 electrons. So when you go to look, make sure you pick the previous noble gas. That's xenon. And then after xenon, you'll be in row 6, which is the row that mercury is in. So that's 6, S2. And then after 6S, remember that we drop down, lutetium and lawrencium are part of the F block. So we're going to drop down, follow those numbers, uh, those atomic numbers, and we're going to go to 4F. And that's going to hold 14, 5D. Subtract 1 for, five, for the D, subtract 2 for the F, and 5D is full, so it has 10, and that's it. So that's where mercury is. If you look on the periodic table, you can see it's in the D block in the 10th little spot. Don't forget that 4F, so it's S, F, D, and then P. Try the next one. Go ahead and find the atomic number for it. You should have 100. Remember to pause and look at these things for yourself because it'll take some practice. All right, when you look at fermion, the noble gas above it, in the square brackets, you're going to put radon. And then in the next row, the next row after that is 7, and we're going to have S that has 2. And then you can see fermiums in that second F row, so it's 5F. And you want to count over from the first one, it's 5, you want to count over from Lorentzium, so it's 5F12. Don't forget that Lorentzium is part of that F row. Now, with Darmstadium, it's number 110. Uh, I gave that one to you because I think on your reference table it doesn't, tell, it doesn't have the symbol on there. Again, the previous noble gas for that one is radon. And then after that, again, we're in row 7, so it's 7S with 2. Don't forget to subtract 2 as you go to the F, so 5F. And F is full, so it's going to have 14. And then Darm Stadium is in the D block, so it's 6. D is one less than the row that it's in, 6, D, and then 8. If you have questions on this, see me in class, and we'll take a look at some more examples.